Okay, I'm going to Japan on a 787. This is on my bucket list. Okay, I'm on a and &A Airlines in the new Boeing 787. And there's some cool lean improvements in this bathroom. Believe me, this is not going to be R-rated, but i got to show you. First of all, when you go in, the light goes off, so it gives you a visual cue. You need to lock the door, okay? So now we've locked the door. Everything's good. Now, the next thing is, check out this door the way it works. It comes on the side instead of hinges. It hinges in the center, so it's easier to get in and out of. Then, here's where the good stuff starts. You ready? So, it's got this nice little light panel here, which is kind of cool. But then when you go down to the toilet, man, nobody learns to grab the edge of it. So here, they've got little handles, so you can lift that one. And then, of course, you want to lift that one, you can lift that one, right? Now here's the cool thing. You get done, you're ready to flush the toilet, watch what happens. You wave your hand, you don't touch it so you're not spreading germs, right? There we go. A little bar kicks out and shuts the toilet. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a good lean bathroom and good continuous improvement. My only question is, what took them so long to figure this out? Everything is pretty cool. There you go, lean in the air. Hello everyone, Paul Akers. I'm on day one of my Japan study mission. And what I'm gonna do is a simple blog every day of what I learned in Japan on this trip. This will be my fourth trip to Japan. So I'm gonna show you a lot of cool things that I've taken video of as well. But I just wanna recap day one because really the first day was Sunday, just orientation. We had a little bit of lecture, walked around Tokyo, did things like that. But I actually learned more in day one to make the whole trip worth it. If I went home today, I feel like what I learned yesterday was worth the whole trip. So here you go, this is what I learned. We're sitting in a uh, lecture group with Norman Bodak, and Norman asks the question, he says, What is Japan all about? And there's about 24 people there that are all pretty astute lean leaders, all have a lot of success in lean from all over the world, whether it be Mexico, Spain, the United States, Canada, we're from all over the place, UK. And the interesting thing is, is that nobody answered the question correctly, including myself. I raised my hand and said, what is Japan all about? I said, continuous improvement. And Norman said, no. And he just kept going around the entire room and nobody got it right. So you might be asking yourself, what is Japan all about? And what is it, right? And Norman said, quality. What makes Japan so special is quality. And when you really think about it, it's really profound. When you think about it, you've got Honda, we've got Toyota, we've got Panasonic, we've got Sony, we've got Mitsubishi, we have Kubota. We have all some of the best brands in the world are all Japanese. Now, how does a country with 110 million people, the size of California, become like the second largest economy in the world? It's really pretty staggering. Such a small group of people become so powerful. Well, the reason why is because when Deming taught them quality after the war, they focused on quality. So I would have said that what Japan is all about is Kaizen, continuous improvement. No, Kaizen is the methodology to achieve quality. What Japan is all about is quality. Now, I remember really well, I was born in 1960. I remember in the 60s, uh, you know, turning over things and seeing uh, made in Japan. And immediately we said, piece of junk. We didn't want to buy it. Now, Japan went through a total transformation of being the, the country that produces crap, if you will, to being the country, country that produces the best in the world. They are the best manufacturers in the world. And so that was a huge revelation for me yesterday to realize that it's really all about quality and all these things we do, uh, continuous improvement, are really the vehicles to get to quality. That was a profound revelation, and I think that's part of the fun part about being a lean leader is, you know, discovering all these new things all the time. You think you know it all, but just when you think you know it all, you find out something new. So that was profound. The second thing I learned was unbelievable. I think it was, uh, it was Mr. Nakamura gave us a lecture, and he said something statistically that blew me away. He said, if an organization, if everyone in an organization makes a tenth of a 1% improvement every day, so everybody in the organization doesn't make a 1% improvement, but makes a tenth of 1% improvement, a tiny improvement every day, that if collectively they do that for two years, they will double the productivity of the entire organization. That's crazy. 
That is a crazy concept. That just goes to show you how powerful continuous improvement is and small incremental improvements. You know, in my gut, I kind of knew the concept of two second lean making tiny little improvements was powerful. And I didn't know of any other way to convey to an entire organization. That's all you need to do is make these small improvements. But when I saw statistically, that this tiny improvement would amount to a doubling of productivity in two years. I'm going to tell you, that that just riveted my mind that I was going the right direction. But this morning when we were discussing amongst ourselves, we said, why is it that most people don't do that? And, you know, the thing is people want the big wins. People want to see the big numbers. Well, the real reason if you drill down all the way is because it's the difference between short-term thinking and long-term thinking. So lean is about long-term thinking. It's not about saying, oh, well, we got to do something and we got to measure it right there and see the result. Lean is about doing a disciplined work on a daily basis, and then the result long-term pays off into a operational excellence or a dynamic organization. So I think that's really the thing. Are you a long-term thinker or are you a short-term thinker? If you're a long-term thinker, you don't worry about whether or not you get to the bottom line in a month or two months or three months because you know in five years the bottom line is going to be there. You know in five years operational excellence will exist in your organization. So, so those are the two things I learned in day one of the Japan study mission. Hopefully that's helpful and uh, we'll see you on day two really soon. Well, hello everyone, uh, Paul Akers. I'm in Japan on a Euro on a European study mission. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Do a blog on a daily. This sucks. Okay, you ready? One more time. So we went to a department store, and it's pretty amazing. They have this little umbrella machine that puts a plastic bag over your umbrella so you don't take water or moisture into the store. And the Japanese are so disciplined. So this one lady sees a bag on the ground. She picks it up, leaves it better than she finds it. And then when you come out of the store, you recycle your bag, you know, you don't just throw it in the trash. Everybody, in a very disciplined fashion, everyone just follows suit, puts it in there. It's really quite amazing to watch the Japanese, how they work. And Tokyo is just so when, clean. When we go to the Shenkan train, and it's scheduled for 5.45, it's there 5.45, and you have two minutes to get on and off. Two minutes. They're absolutely precise in Japan. And what about a volcano? What if a volcano comes? Oh yeah, well, it's a vo that's the only excuse, is a volcano or an earthquake. So that's why is it, Norman, that they are so precise? What is it about the Japanese culture? I don't know. Give it, <laughs> give it to your wife and ask your wife why. Why, why, why are the Japanese so precise? Why not? There you go. What an answer. The Japanese are so precise. Why not be that precise? So watch this gate system. Now watch these We're gates. Full speed these are gates this. that you depend the on. The gates lower Woo! down and they go up exactly at the right time. Advertising on the handrails. They don't miss a thing in Japan, man. I guess for people that like tripods, every tripod you could imagine for the rest of your life is here. And then if you want an eye pole, check this out. Every model of eye pole imaginable to the human race and every model of tripod available to the human race. This is insanity. So I'm at Starbucks getting my incredible Americano right here in Japan. Thank you. Domo arigato. Check this out. We're talking really, really well done. So when you throw things out, you put the paper there, plastic, all visual controls. Everything's well labeled, right? But here's where it really gets good. Paper food there. Plastic there, trays there, liquids in a nice little funnel system, paper cups here, plastic cups here. They have it so dialed in for recycling, it's the best I've ever seen right here in Japan. Okay, we're at QB House. This is where you get your hair cut, and they have an Ondon right here that tells you it's 15 minutes right now, or if it's the other yellow, it's five to 10 minutes, or green, they can seat you immediately. Isn't this cool? Only the Japanese think of stuff like this. This is just so dynamite. What is that? Wow. wow that... <laughs> I don't know if I 
I should have ate that. <laughs> <laughs> not sure that I should have ate. Not sure that I should have ate that. That was that was that was that was pushing the envelope right there. We're gonna do this one more time. The green slide. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> I know one thing. It's got to be good for you, but it's very interesting. <laughs> it's a green slime. Wow, it's crazy. <laughs>